Hey, what's up, everybody? Video 44 is coming to you another video. All right, so I wanted to do a therapy session, let you know how the day went. Uh, and and then I will listen to the video I made about the Lakers after this. And I know you guys don't care anything about that, but since it's a therapy session, you might as well know exactly what's going on. So that's what it is. You guys obviously know about the struggles I was having this morning. I talked for 170 minutes or something like that. I don't know that I've ever talked that long in any camera of any kind, but... I guess you can say I needed it, and I thank you guys for allowing me to do it. Even if you didn't watch it, it's there, so whatever. <laughs> but the point is I needed that, and then this morning after that, um, I made another therapy session telling you guys that, you know, God had worked something out to where I had gotten a hold of a friend who needed me to help him move, and I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do it. And the morning was bad, man. I was in a very bad space this morning. After I got off the video with you guys, I told you, uh, the one hour and a half video, I said, you know what, I listened to that video and had a tough time listening to it. It was a real tough time, but what I needed was to just be around people that care about me, do something that made me useful, fresh air, sunlight, and I got all of that. Right after that, I left this house for the first time since my birthday. And you guys know exactly that because I remember detailing that to you on my birthday. But this was the first, day I, first time I left the house since then, and I had a nice long day where I went a lot of different places, which was very necessary. You know, going back and forth between one city and the next. And then I was able to kind of go back to my old neighborhood and see how it's looking over there for the first time in two years. That was eye-opening. Seeing how that Miracle Mile area has changed so much. And I was just thinking about how I wanted to go over there and visit just two days ago. Had no path to being there <laughs> at all. But just like God does, he brings you opportunities to be outside um, of whatever it is that you're thinking about when you need to be. And that's what happened, man. I... This was random, man. This was random in the sense that my friend could have called me at any one of these days over the last year and a half and said, I need you to help me move. Any one of these days. But the day that I was going through it probably the most since last year when I was deep, deeply depressed was the day that my friend hit me up and said, yo, I need your help. And I ain't taking no for an answer because I ain't about to lift all this stuff with <laughs> me and my cousins. You going to come. And so that was what it was, man. I just did. I, I, I was having a bad morning physically, too. My stomach was not right based on the stress. And uh, it just worked all the way out, you know. It worked all the way out. It was one of them situations where my friend told me he was 30 minutes out and I needed about an hour and a half to, <laughs> to get ready. Uh, and he didn't show up for an hour and a half. So it was like most times I'd be upset, but in this day it was exactly what I needed. <laughs> I needed him to do exactly what he did. Um we got everything done. The body reacted well to the lifting. It was like four flights of stairs. But all of this working out and all this squatting I've been doing, it made it so that I was able to do all that stuff without really feeling nothing. I sweated and I got tired to a degree, but like the legs, um, the work is, is working, put it like that. And I hadn't had a chance to test it out in anything at all since obviously I don't leave the house. So the workouts were extreme. In regards to how I'm climbing stairs, I don't think I've ever climbed stairs as comfortably as I did today. Never in my life. So that's what it is, man. Just just feeling good, feeling good, feeling the work working. And I also got some, myself some new weights. My friend uh, who we helped move had some, I did like 20 pounders or something that I didn't, uh, that he didn't want anymore. So I took them, you know, just some extra weights, nothing heavier than I already had, but just something different that'll give me a different, different thing. So looking forward to using those to see what happens. So, yeah, man, it's one of the best days I've ever had. Not necessarily because of all that happened during the day, but just because of how bad the morning was and how much of a relief being around loved ones actually was. That's that's what it was. I was telling my friends, you know, this is this is a great day for me. Like, even though we ain't doing nothing but a bunch of stuff that we normally would complain about, chores, you know, helping each other move, all that stuff. But I'm telling you, never, I don't think there's ever been a day where I needed my friends more and didn't call them and still had them. Essentially what I'm telling you. I don't think it's ever been a day. Not in, not, not, not in the memory that I have in my mind right now. Where I desperately needed to be around the people I ended up being around. And just did not initiate that at all. At all. And so it's just God, man. That's what it is. It's just God. And I prayed hard this morning. I was telling him how much pain I was in this morning. And how much I didn't want to react to that pain in the same way that I normally do. It's like, I'm fine with being in pain because I've made some bad decisions and led to some bad choices, bad outcomes. But what I don't want to be is suffering because I don't know where the outlet will be to fix it. 
I don't have that problem anymore. I know how to fix my problems. I just got to endure them just the same. Art. And then, as I look, friendship, people, sunlight, action, activity, distractions that help, positive distractions and encouragement. Listening to my friend tell me how best to, um, you know, grow this channel, you know, listening to him. And I realized, or I already knew, that a lot of the stuff that it takes to grow channels is just stuff that I don't necessarily do. It doesn't mean that I don't believe they should be done. It's just because of the way my mind and my, my head is. I just don't necessarily believe I want to interact. Now, once I start interacting, I have a good time. Because <laughs> I was talking to two strangers today like I knew them for 30 years. That was another thing. Met some two new cats, you know, good guys we got along with. And we, we had banter as if we had known each other for a long time. So that was really cool. Uh, just to kind of be around some new people, that kind of thing. But, you know, the, once I get interacting, then I'm having fun. But before that, while I'm thinking about what it takes to interact, it's unbearable. So it's just a conundrum that, that I'm forced to live with and overcome. But um, I did. Today was great in that regard. And plus, being home with the problems that I have, having to face them alone... I was telling the Lord, like, I, I was telling you guys, I don't know how the hell I'm going to do this alone. Like, I know what I'm capable of, but this is this is not where I'm at. And my mindset and what has to be done, they're not aligned. I'm messed up, and I'm in a real bad space mentally. So what has to be done, it's like a chore. But, like, after a day like today, you're like, all right, well, all of those things require things that were much easier for me after the day. Based on my how much social energy I had today, how many people I was around, how much in the car I was, all that kind of stuff that you just take for granted that you live your life, but you realize that if you're in jail or if you isolate like I did, you ain't gonna be having none of that going on. Like my, you know, my guys would ask me, "Hey, would you drive the U-Haul?" Hell no, nah, I ain't gonna get behind the wheel for the first time in over a year. <laughs> it was a U-Haul truck? No, nah, nah, I'm not doing that. Nope. So it's like, how you know, I got to get my confidence back to drive again. It's like it just didn't seem smart to me. For the first thing you do with that, you ain't been in a, in a in a moving traveling vehicle in over a year. But the first thing you do is want to get behind the wheel. Yeah, I, I trust my coordination, but I don't want to play around like that. Plus, I'm a late driver. I didn't start driving regularly until I was in my thirties. So for me, that's like that's a that's a that's a double no go. When you're a fresh new driver, only been driving for five years, and then I take a year and a half off. Oh no no no, you don't get back out there like that. You gotta you gotta warm yourself up, in my opinion. In my opinion, with my situation, so. That's how I felt, man. Um, the confidence to drive wasn't there, but the confidence to do what I needed to do was. Uh, went into a grocery store, store for the first time in a long time. Like, imagine that. A grocery store, a real one. I bought myself some actual bananas that I picked out. <laughs> Stuff like that. It's like, you don't realize what you take for granted or don't, you know, think of as a chore until you have it removed from your life and then you get back to it. Or, you know, stuff like being around your friends helping them move. I always enjoy being around my buddies helping them move. But not like I enjoyed it today. <laughs> not like, I felt like I was at Disneyland today. It was ridiculous. So, you know, it's just one of those situations where you, you, you don't know how your day is going to pan out. When I woke up this morning with the things that I had on my skull, uh, the last thing I was thinking about was that my day was going to go very well. And if you watch my videos, you're going to know that. That's why the importance of making this video was there. Because, like... Y'all need to see how that day panned out. Y'all need to see how miserable I was in the beginning of the day and how ultimately fine I ended up being at the end of the day. And it's just God, man. It's just God. You lean on him. You tell him what you need. You do all the things that you're supposed to do or that you know you're supposed to do. And then you just wait for him to move. You take care of what you got to control and you did it in the right spirit and you got love in your heart and you're praising him. There ain't nothing going to go wrong. Even if it does go wrong, you ain't going to perceive it going all the way wrong. And like 10 blessings is going to come after that. It's just how he works. And when the trauma and the tragedy comes, he'll be right there to keep you strong. You're going to go through it. You're going to go through it. You're going to get through it. The only way you don't get through it is if you walk away from him in the process. It's what I've learned. It's what I've learned. And every time people tell me, oh, there's no God, there's no God. And I say, then why did T hit me up this morning? <laughs> why did he hit me up after I got out of the shower when I was in that shower going through it? Like going through it. Not okay at all in that shower. Got out of the shower and my friend had hit me up twice to let me know it was an emergency so I better hit him back. It was like, 
if T's hit me up, the first thing I thought was he probably watched a therapy session. <laughs> but that wasn't the case. He, in fact, he don't even have my channel link, like, at all. I'm supposed to be sending him a link to one of these videos so he have have some access to it. So it's one of those situations like, that's God. It's only him. And I was thinking, well, maybe another friend of mine who knows what's going on might have told somebody else who got it back to him. But no, that didn't happen either. It, that didn't happen either. And it wasn't Tendai just having a feeling that he needs to call me. None of that. No, it was situations taking place that required my help. So it's just like, you see God working. And if you don't believe that's him, I don't know really what to, what to tell you because it's exactly what where the proof is. Stuff like that, the stuff that people like to write off as coincidences. Nah, he's right there. He's doing it. He's doing that for you. He's doing that for others, etc. So I, I had one of the best dates I could think of just because of the decompression aspect of it. When you decompress after being heavily stressed and then someone removes the stress, problems remain, but the stress and the strain turns into laughter and friendship and good banter. It just helped me understand that, that it's okay to keep praying the way that I've been doing. It's okay to keep talking to him about the things I've been frustrated with. It's okay to keep asking him for new solutions and to, to ask him to get me into certain situations. I think I asked him to get me out of this house yesterday. I really do believe I asked him to do that in the shower yesterday. I was like, because what I don't want to do is have the first place I go next to go be a courthouse. The first thing I do when I leave this house, after being in this house of isolation, stressed out, should not be something extremely stressful. And there was no path to that. You see what I'm saying? That's why I know this was God. Because there was no path to that at all. It was definitely me going to the courthouse next. I didn't have no other thing going on. But on this day... Before I needed to move And on this day T was not about to go up there by himself <laughs> It just wasn't So that's what it was man And I couldn't have been more happy How it turned out ultimately I still got the same problems I really do But I was able to get that information To my uncle uh, The paperwork So hopefully he'll be able to advise me On how best to go forward I also got a friend of mine Who's an attorney um, so I probably need to contact him tomorrow See if he can give me some advice on how best to try to extend whatever But I think the ability uh, To do that has become much more confident in my head Because of all that I had to deal with Today, which was good All of the things that I was blessed to be able to, to do Be with my friends You know, I talked to my to my boy's mom I mean, she, she, you know I don't have to tell you guys you can hear it in my voice how much their family means to me. And it's, it's been tough times over there without mentioning their business. It's been very tough. And I ain't been there for that. And that ain't all right. It's that kind of thing. So, you know, it's like I was telling a friend of mine when I got home. When you peek your head up after living in your own little space of hell or peace or whatever you created for yourself. When you peek your head up and you look at all the people you love and you realize you should have been there for all of that. Whatever the hell you had going on. It was garbage in comparison to where you needed to be and what, what was needed of you. And that's what I found out listening to my friends and how their last year and a half has gone. You know, we're all going through it. You know, I'm not going to minimize their issue or say that their issue is, you know, nothing. I'm telling you that we're all going through it. And so that's that's what it is. Uh, and I just felt a lot better about being there today. I was appreciative that my boys, you know, embraced me, listened to what I had to say about my own self, you know, because I'm so self-absorbed at all times with my bull crap. But I tell you, that's not my soul. It's not. It's my brain. It ain't my soul. And so that's why I was so happy to do that for my friends today. <clears throat> that's exactly why I want to do that. I, I told them, I was like, even if I'm in a space where I don't know where I'm at, if I'm on a ledge ready to jump, if y'all tell me y'all need me, that's going to save my life. Cause I'm coming And that's how I feel about all my real friends Like if I'm on the edge and you call me I'm probably going to come off that edge to save you And that's why I was telling my friends Like it's easy for me to forget how needed I can be Not to say that I'm needed necessarily But how needed I could be For being away I don't think of those things at all You know it's one of those things It's like I don't think my energy can help Even if it can I just don't perceive that and if I am perceiving that, it's like this is more important to me at the time. I'm, most, I'm in a selfish space when I'm in my own space because anything outside of the space is ultimately a rupture of my mentality. 
not necessarily anything that contribute anything positive until I get there, of course. So it's the demon. It's the demon I've been dealing with. It's why I've had the life that I've lived. It's not nobody's fault but mine, or rather the fault, the fault of the fact that I didn't get that cleared up in my own skull. Uh, but I think it's going to work out. I think tonight was yet another indicator that I'm on the right track. This is yet another indicator that I've put out the right energy and deserve good things as according to the Lord at this time, at this point. Because I don't believe that that's always been the case. And that's kind of how the conversation went with my friend and I. He was like, you know, you get to a place where you've changed, but you have to change your ways too. You got the wisdom behind what it is you need to do, but not the habits of choosing the right choice. And that's where I'm at. It's like all that old childishness is still there. The lack of discipline is in some really, really irritating ways, I guess you could say for myself. But since I've built other things, my body is built up a little bit more. I can see where I'm headed there. Building up this channel, of course, I can see where this is good, going to go well. Um, all the other things that I've built, playlists and all that stuff I tell you about, it just gives me the confidence that I can attack an indifferent, a t entirely different thing and build, you know. And so that's what I want to do is kind of work on my mental health, work on being more social like I was today, uh, work on being there for my friends and less selfish in my mindset, more intent on overcoming my own social anxieties for the betterment of my why. No different than stepping away from uh, certain other things that I needed to know why I needed to step away from. It wasn't going to be because I didn't want those things. It was because I didn't like what came with those things. And so this is, this is yet another one of those things where it's like, you get to a point where you've changed, you know. I'm not, I'm not, the, I'm not as unhappy as I was in the first half of this process. The first six months of this, I was miserable. The second six months was me essentially saying, "Thank you, Lord, for getting me out of that, and let's build." And so now I'm here building. I'm doing all this. I'm happy. I'm done. And it's like, you know what? But you're still gonna have to pay for them old sins and them old ways that you did. You know, you still gotta pay for all that bull crap you was on. You know, I can't. The Lord is telling me, I can't, I can't save you from gravity. It's essentially what the Lord is telling me. I'm not going to betray the laws of gravity to save you from mistakes. But what I can do is make it so that everything you do after this works out and all these little mistakes that you've made are going to leave you stronger and all this other stuff is going to be behind you soon enough to so just see the clock run, run itself out and you'll be fine. Do what you need to do in regards to what it is that's in front of you one step at a time, not the whole mountain. And it was the type of conversation we were having in the car. Similar to that, just aligned with what it is that I was already thinking in regards to progressing myself. So that was encouraging, man, to listen to my big bro talk to me, you know, that way. You know, it was encouraging, man. And so that's what it was. Just got a, a little bit of a spiritual boost, I guess you could say, from the day. And I think the sunlight did me a lot of good, too, man. We talk about certain things we take for granted. Sunlight on your head, <laughs> sunlight on your arm. <laughs> Breeze and, and fresh air. I really had to pray myself with these things and didn't realize I needed them as much as I did until I got out there and just breathed. Like, literally, just breathed. <laughs> Some fresh air while sitting on the U Haul truck for like five minutes, just understanding that I had not put myself in a position to even see down the street from my house in six months. I didn't even know there was a Taco Bell down the street. I didn't know. Last time I went outside my apartment, that Taco Bell wasn't there. Like, this is the type of stuff. It's like, yo, what the hell? You know, going to Miracle Mile, my old neighborhood, and like every other building looks different. They didn't, they didn't build stuff over there. It didn't even look like that. It didn't gut at certain aspects of the build, the, the the property, uh, in certain areas of the street. And you're just sitting there like, what am I looking at? Did I walk down this street 170 thousand times, like 10 years ago? Cause this don't look like the street I walked down. It's one of those. You go back to your home and you don't recognize it's home. It's not. It's not home. Anymore. So that was something else that was kind of eye-opening. I'm like, this looked like Miracle Mile, but they didn't, like, demolish half the buildings over here and replace them. So uh, that was that was really interesting. Um, you know, just Burbank. I remember how much I liked Burbank, even though it was cold today for our standards. 62 degrees cold for us, not for you maybe, but it was cold over there for us, man, trying to, trying to lift and all that. We used to 80 degrees, 75 degree weather. It's 62, you're like, ah. We, we, we complain about that over here, but we got the job done, man. It wasn't too many heavy things that he had. You know, all the heavy stuff was doable. It was a lot of stairs, though, as I told you guys. My body reacted well to them stairs. He had three flights, four flights of stairs in the place he was moving out from. And I hadn't been there since we moved him in there. 
<laughs> ironically enough that's how i am but I, I moved him in there and we climbed on them damn steps and i remember how difficult that was at the time and then of course to do it this time in a much better shape but it was still a lot of steps man it was a lot boy i had four flights of stairs so at two flights each it was like doubles it was like eight so yeah we had a lot of stuff to carry down uh and then they had and on top of that he had like some deep deep steep stairs that led up to the building itself like 17 deep stairs on top of the eight uh, it was crazy man that part, apartment complex was absolutely nuts the fact they didn't have an uh, elevator there is criminal but uh, i'm glad he moved out of there and moved back into a space that has an elevator and uh in a neighborhood that i thought probably was more fitting for them you know just from what what who they are so I, I like the place that he moved into. We had good energy in that apartment. That was another thing that stood out to me. When I walked into that apartment, I felt like goodness. It was like, sometimes you walk in a place, you feel bad energy. Sometimes you walk in a place, you're like, oh, that's different. That was like, oh, okay, this is a good person who lived here before they were here. That's what I vibed off of. It was like, ah, oh, yeah, this is a good place. This is good people here. It's that kind of thing. So I, I tend to be spiritually inclined in that way. And that place gave off some very good vibes. Uh, even though the, the, the railing broke. The railing came up to my hips. Like, you could totally find yourself drunk and then fall over there. You ain't even got to be that tall. And so for me, it's like, if if they're going to secure that area a bit better, I feel a lot better. Because he does have a small child. Uh, not too small, but, you know, he's like 10 years, 11 years old. I, I don't like it. I don't like that aspect of the building. To where your railing is on both sides. All the way across. All the way through. And the railing only comes up to your hip. And I'm like, 5'9"? Like, come on, man. You asked him for it. So that that's the only thing I can say about that apartment complex that I wasn't in love with. But everything else looked great there. So happy for my buddy uh, and his family. So that's what it is, man. Just 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 a good day. A good day. At, you know, the actual day where I get to report something that didn't happen in this apartment. And that's rare, as you know. But one thing I didn't get to do is keep my Lakers schedule. And I was telling my, my friends, like, yo, I really love what I do, man. Like, I would love to sit here and drink beers with y'all, but I, I really do have something that I, I got a life to get back to. Like, this channel thing means everything to me. So I don't mind missing the first half of the game to help y'all move, but to miss the whole game and not be able to do my content, that's not something I'm signing up for. <laughs> so y'all better hurry this up. Uh, but but that's what it was. Hey, we, we got it done. Everybody else was in just as much of the rush as I was, so it wasn't a big deal. We got it out of there. And, I think we handled most of what we needed to do in a matter of like four hours, uh, five hours maybe. And I think we were doing a lot more lazying around than we probably should have been doing. So could have been done sooner, but all in all, excuse me, that was the best best day I've had all year for sure. And I just hope that the com combination of the hard times and the good times can help me address the hard times a bit better. Because uh, even now I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the weight of what it is that I have to get back to. It's like, okay, you went out on a vacation, but you still got to get back to work. You still got to get back to, to the reality. And that's where I'm at. It's like, back to reality. Now it's time to have some hard conversations. Now it's time to do some things that are not going to be comfortable going to places I probably don't want to go. Look for some things that I probably don't want to look for and walk out of a comfort zone that I've had for the last seven years. Uh, so for me, it's like I wasn't necessarily prepared for that. Uh, bad decisions that ultimately allowed me to be in this space uh, but at the same time I would like to stay in my place for what it's worth I would like to be here uh, to my own choice you know what I mean until till it's my choice to leave I guess you can say but I haven't earned that I ain't paid that you know what I mean how, how, you, how can you ask for that if you didn't do your part so you know if, you, if you're going to be a squatter you're going to get treated like one know that and that's the lesson to learn here from BDF 44. I was a squatter. I didn't want to squat. I wanted to pay. But you guys know the circumstances. That wasn't real to me. And because I wasn't doing anything to make sure I had to pay in other ways, it wasn't there. You know what I mean? So now it's about, okay, recalibrating the ego. I got to get back to work. What's available to me? And how do I maintain what I do that I love to do that means more to me than anything else? While trying to do things that I have to do. And the answer is. I don't know. But. Given the fact that the Lord. Kind of answered the call today. And got me out the house. I'm pretty sure something will come up. 
it's just how it, it plays out. But I'll say this, even in a happy space, I'll tell you this, you got to get to that point where things are happy. I had to get through this morning. There were points of time this morning, I didn't know if I was get through this morning. <laughs> like, honestly. But I got through it. And because I got through it, there was a nice little day to have after that. So, if y'all look back at how I was feeling in that in those videos, you will understand exactly how real God is, man. You know exactly how it is. But. So, I think that sums up the day, I guess. I'm, I'm trying to figure out if there's anything else I want to say and drag these therapy sessions out as long as I can most times because that's just how I am. But I don't think it's a whole lot to complain about. Um, God was good to me today. I've had my struggles. But this is one of them days where I could look back and say, man, he turned the whole day around. Started off one way in an extreme way and ended it a different way in an extreme way. And I'm happy about the whole thing. And uh, I just would like to have more days like this without so much bad attached to them. And the habits for which would make this such a fantastic day. Which would be isolation from everybody at all times. So that's what I got to say. My name is BDL44. I thank you all for watching. Ow.